my channel and I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in forever because for the past couple of videos I've been doing like non sit down videos they've been more fashion related videos and I hope you guys have been liking that I've been getting a lot of great feedback on it but I just felt like sitting down and talking to you guys for a change so that's what I'm going to be doing today and probably the most requested video on my channel and on my Instagram and on my Twitter is doing a what's on my iPhone video plus how I edit my Instagram pictures so that's what I'm going to be doing for you guys today. I'm going to be fulfilling your requests. If you're new to my channel, be sure to go ahead and subscribe and you can go check out all of my other videos because I have a ton of different kinds of videos so maybe you'll find something you'll like. So um, without further ado, let's just check out what's on my iPhone. So I have the iPhone 5S in gold and I thought it'd be a cool idea to show you guys some of my favorite cases. So the one that I have on currently is this like sort of half mandala henna design case and I got it on eBay for like two bucks. eBay is honestly the best place to find cheap cases and this one is really cool because it's clear so you can see the gold through it. Um, I also have another one of those henna design ones um, but this one's more of a organic one I guess. It has more swirly designs. I also have this 3D pyramid triangle case which I love. That one I left on the longest because I loved it. And I also have this dark bejeweled case that I got from Dynamite um, as a Christmas present and I think this one's stunning. It's just kind of heavy so I don't really use it that much but I think the jewels are so pretty and I feel so fabulous when I carry it. So um, those are my four favorite cases. Let's just get right into it. When you turn on my phone, the first thing you see is my lock screen. Right now my lock screen picture is a picture of the pentatonics that I took when I went to their concert. It was amazing. It honestly changed my life. So yeah, I just have one of the pictures that I took of all five of them as my lock screen because I'm still in post-concert depression. So on the very first page of my phone, I have pretty much all of the default apps because I just like it organized that way. I'm really particular about the way that I organize my apps on my phone. So I have really similar apps next to each other, like photos and videos and notes and reminders. And then in this folder over here, I have useless crap because I don't really use it, so I don't want it to be taking up space on my phone. There's just all of these other random apps like Game Center, Stocks, and Newsstand, and Passbook. Like, who actually uses all of these? And yeah, the Mail and the Maps app are in here because I use other ones, but you'll see that later. And then the bottom four apps are, I just have Phone, Message, Music, and Safari, pretty standard. But the next page is where it gets more interesting. So in this page, I have it organized that all of the apps that I use the most are outside of folders because I don't want to spend time opening a folder. I know, it's weird. I have Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, of course. I'm obsessed with Snapchat right now. Like, I used to not like Snapchat, but now I'm really, really into it. My Snapchat is public, so if you want to follow me on Snapchat, you can follow me at Amanda Rachely. Okay, and then other than that, I have a sleep app, which is an alarm app. I like using this for my alarm because it tracks the amount of sleep that I get and you can wake up to any music that you want. So here's what it looks like. Um, you can set all of the alarms over here and um, let's say I turn on this alarm and I fall asleep. So yeah, now I would be asleep and I would have this on my nightstand. When it's time to wake up, the alarm goes off and it can be whatever song you want. And what I love about this is that you can shake to snooze. So it's so handy in the morning when you don't want to look for the snooze button. So all you have to do is just like literally smack your phone and it'll snooze. But yeah, you can wake up and yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you just slide up, it shows you the amount of sleep that you've had over the last 7 days. Um, and the last 30 days, it shows you all of like the data. Um, over here it says zero because that's the one that I just did. So don't worry, I'm not getting zero hours of sleep. But anyways, yeah, it's really useful because you can track, like monitor the amount of sleep that you're getting. Then, of course, I have YouTube. And um, next to it, I have Gmail because that's the mail app that I actually use. And then on the last row, I have sort of music-related apps. I have Remote, which is really cool. You can use it to control the music on your MacBook. So I usually play music on my MacBook, but if I'm somewhere else in the room or like in a different room and I want to change the song, you can just use it to change 
the song. It's pretty useful. Of course, I have Spotify. I've been obsessed with Spotify. It's pretty much the best thing ever. I'm so glad that it's available in Canada right now. So yeah, those apps are the ones that I use the most, but on the top, I have four different folders. I have lifestyle, social, games, and photography. So in lifestyle, I have a banking app, a period tracker, the Uber app, Cineplex, and Timehop, which Timehop is just so amusing. Let's see what's on my Timehop right now. Okay, so a year ago, I was filming a Q&A, and two years ago, I was having crepes. No surprise there. Um, social, I have Facebook Pages Manager, which I don't really use that much because I don't really use my um, Facebook page that often. Um, I have Pinterest, The Hunt, Vine, and FaceTime. These are the social media networks that I don't really use that often, but it's just nice to have the apps there. Um, next, I have the games folder. I used to have so many games on my phone. I used to be one of those people who had like three folders of games, but I sort of narrowed it down to six. So I have Solitaire, which is always a classic. I have Just Get 10, which I'm obsessed with. I'll do a quick demo. So um, you basically tap the numbers to join them, and then you have to get to 10. So um, yeah, it's really... It's really amusing, and I've played this game way too much. I've gotten to 11, so my next goal is 12. I have the tower, which is also a really amusing game. Basically, what you have to do is tap to stack the tower, and it gets faster and faster, and it's very... It's one of those good games where you... Okay, I suck at this. I have two dots, which I finished the entire game, but I just can't get myself to delete it. I have 94%, which is really fun. I just got this, so I'm not very far. But um, you basically have to figure out the answers that 94% of people say. So first thing you do in the morning, I already wrote breakfast, stretch, brush teeth, and I have to figure out these answers over here. And then finally, I have Jelly Jump, which is probably the most frustrating game in the world. So you tap to play, and then basically you just jump, but it's... I don't know why it's so difficult. Oh, okay. There you go. So those are all of the games inside of my games folder. And finally, I left the photography folder for last because um, I wanted to talk about how I edit my Instagram pictures because so many of you guys have been asking that on my Instagram. So quickly, I'm just going to show you guys my Instagram feed. Um, my Instagram is just Amanda Rachel Lee. Basically, it's just a lot, a lot of black and white and occasionally some blue. So yeah, um, you guys have been commenting a lot recently asking me how I edit my pictures and you guys have been complimenting my feed, which honestly, it's the best thing anybody can ever say to me. It makes me so happy. Okay, so let's get right into this Instagram business because it's serious business. So first I have, of course, VSCO Cam, the most iconic Instagram app of all time, but I use it for pretty much every single one of my pictures. And then next to it I have Afterlight, which I used to use a lot more before, but now I don't really use it that much. Um, I also have Collage, which I, I forgot what the name of this is. Wait, hold on. Yeah, this is Fusel Collage. I love this collage app the best, and I've tried so many of them because you can actually customize the collages. Let's just say I wanted to collage this. I can cut it this way if I wanted to, or this way. And then if I really wanted to, I could do this. And then these all become separate little boxes. So I can play around with this, and I can play around with the layout and everything. And it just gives you a lot more options than the other um, collage apps where you pretty much only have the preset um, collages. I don't really post collages a lot on my Instagram, but it's good if you have something to fix or like if you want to post a collage on Facebook and stuff. Then I also have Photo Wonder, which is this really Asian editing app. Um, you can also collage on this, but I pretty much only use the edit option. And the main thing that I use it for is to get rid of any red eye or if I have a really, really obvious pimple, I know, scandalous. Um, a lot of people use it and basically you go to edit. Let's edit this photo. If I wanted to smooth out the skin, right now this picture of my skin isn't that bad, but um, you could go skin and you get really fuzzy. I pretty much only use it like this much. And if you really wanted to get rid of blemishes, you could use blemish fix. And then of course there's red eye and stuff. And yeah, I don't really use it that often, but it's pretty much only if there's a really obvious pimple that's really bothering me. So 
that is my justification. <laughs> and my last photography app before I get into VSCO because that's like my main one um, is Snapseed which is a really really cool and useful app especially for me since my feed is so white. For example if I take a picture in front of a white background and there's like a shadow that makes one corner darker than the rest and it doesn't really look uniform you can use this to get rid of it so let's do an example. Let's say this was my picture and it's all white pretty much but there's like these weird dark shadows so I go into selective adjust and you can add a thing here and pretty much you can select the area that you want to edit and I can make it brighter to match the other ones and you can also change the saturation so there's none of that yellow weird like lighting. If you see pictures where I have like an all white background pretty much I've used Snapseed to make it more like uniform and more white. So that's what I use for Snapseed. And then of course the most important thing to you guys is what filters I use on VSCO cam or Visco cam, whatever you call it. So let's open that up. Here's my Visco cam. It's really useful to use the Visco cam like grid library thing to test out your feed and see what everything looks good with. So let's edit a picture. Um, let's edit this one. Let's go to edit. So oh, if I wanted my picture to be black and white, I would pretty much use a B1 and then change the contrast to make it really contrasty because a lot of my pictures on my Instagram have high contrast. But I don't really post black and white, like black and white filtered pictures a lot. So the filter that I use all the time is A6. So I'm just going to select that and turn it down to like about 9 or 10. And then I'm going to go to um, the settings and change the brightness. So I will change it to like here-ish. And then I'll change the contrast. And I don't really worry about the contrast being perfect on ViscoCam because I actually go back in on the Instagram editing to change the contrast a bit more because you can be more precise with that. And to get rid of that weird yellow lighting, um, I just turn the temperature down to about negative two, which cools it down. Um, um, occasionally I'll turn down the saturation if there's still that weird yellow tint in the background. And that's pretty much it. I don't use fade because again I want my pictures to be really contrasty so fade is the opposite of what I want. Um, sometimes I'll use highlight save which basically gets rid of any overexposed areas. Of course my pictures are all square. This picture is already square. If you're gonna go with a theme, which if you don't have a theme I don't know what you're doing with your life, um, you should either go with all borders or all squares. It just looks more uniform that way. Now, this one looks about right right now and I will just export that. And then what I'll do is I'll go onto the Instagram app, choose that picture, and then I'm going to tweak it a little bit more. So the first thing that I do is make the shadows a lot darker because again, I like that really high contrast look. And then I'll make the highlights brighter. What I like about editing all of these little things on the Instagram is that you can get really precise, like negative one or negative two. You can get it exactly how you want it and I can turn down the warmth and stuff, or yeah, that's about right. I'll just play around a bit more with that and come up with a caption and then post it. So that's how I edit my Instagram pictures. I pretty much use the exact same filter every single picture and I'll just play around with the brightness and the contrast. Okay guys, so that's what's on my iPhone. I hope you found this useful or found some new apps. Um, if you enjoyed, be sure to press thumbs up and also if you're new to my channel, um, click subscribe and you can check out all of my other videos on my channel. Let me know what you think down below and I think that's it. So I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye! Bye.